Hello children. Today in mathematics for standard 4 we are going to learn lesson number 8 measuring time. So children, what do you see in this picture? Yes, it tells us about the daily routine work that we do. That is from the time you wake up till you go back to sleep. After you wake up, you brush your teeth, you go to the toilet, take bath, have your breakfast, go to school, have your lunch, do your homework, go to play, have your dinner and go back to sleep. So how do you come to know about what you have to do when yes with the help of time and how do you come to know the time with the help of a clock now in the second picture this girl is trying to read and tell the time but she is unable so children it's important even for you to understand how to read and tell the time with the help of a clock so today i am going to teach you about it in detail what is time time is defined as the sequence of actions or events that takes place in the present past and future We measure time in seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months and years with clocks and calendars. We measure and define what time of the day it is using clocks. A clock in general has 12 numbers written on it. from 1 to 12 like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 the time is usually based on 12 hour clock it has an hour hand and a minute hand so the hour hand is the short hand and the minute hand is the long hand as you can see in the picture time in hours the hour hand takes 1 hour to move from one number to the other number when the time is full that is complete hours the minute hand is at 12 look at the time shown in the given clocks here it is 4 o'clock 11 o'clock 9 o'clock time in minutes a clock is split up into 12 sections and each section is worth 5 minutes because 5 multiplied by 12 is equal to 60 and there are 60 minutes in an hour one complete round of the clock by the minute hand means that 1 hour has passed now in this picture the blue numbers are standard on all clocks these are clock numbers you will not see the numbers in white circles on normal clocks the way they are on the outside of this clock but these are the minute marks 
like 1 stands for 5, 2 stands for 10, 3 means 15, 4 means 20, 5 means 25, 6 means 30, 7 means 35, 8 means 40, 9 means 45, 10 means 50, 11 means 55 and 12 means 60. Thus every one clock number is equal to 5 minutes. Sixty seconds is equal to one minute. Sixty minutes is equal to one hour. Twenty-four hours is equal to one day. Seven days is equal to one week. And three hundred and sixty-five days is equal to one year. Half hour or half past time. How to read that on a clock? One hour is equal to sixty minutes, which we learned just now. Half an hour is equal to 30 minutes, means it is the half of 60. So when the time is given in half hours, the minute hand is at 6. Let us see a few examples to understand this. It is 30 minutes past 2, when 2 hours and a half hour has past we say it is half past 2 or 2.30 we'll see one more example it is 30 minutes past 7 7 full hours and 1 half hour have passed it is half past 7 or 7.30 quarter past hours a quarter of an hour is equal to 15 minutes. Three quarters of an hour is equal to 45 minutes. When the minute hand is at three, the time is read as quarter past. It means the minute hand has covered 15 minutes. Let us see a few examples. The hour hand is between 12 and 1 and the minute hand is on 3. It is 15 minutes past 12. 12 hours and a quarter hour has passed. It is a quarter past 12 or 12.15. We will see one more example. The hour hand is between 2 and 3. And the minute hand is on 3. It is 15 minutes past 2. 2 hours and a quarter hour has passed. It is a quarter past 2 or 2.15. Quarter 2 hours. When the minute hand points at 9, the time is read as quarter 2. It means the minute hand has covered 45 minutes and the hour hand is close to the next hour. For example, it is 45 minutes past 1. A quarter of an hour less than 2 can also be read as a quarter to 2. Or we can also say it as 145. We'll see one more example. It is 45 minutes past 6. This can also be read as a quarter to 7 or 645. What is AM and PM? We shall learn about it in detail. A day has 24 hours. We use AM or anti-meridium is used to tell time running from midnight to noon and PM or post-meridium for time running from noon to midnight. 
this chart over here explains to us in detail about it from midnight 12 am to noon 12 it is before noon 12 hours before noon so it is am what we use and after that that is from noon 12 o'clock to midnight 12 o'clock we use pm over there so if you see 12 hours before noon and 12 hours afternoon if you add 12 plus 12 you get 24 hours that is in a day there are 24 hours now we shall learn about the calendar time conversion 365 days is equal to one year 52 weeks is equal to one year 10 years is equal to one decade 100 years is equal to one century and 1000 years is equal to one millennium observe the calendar and answer the questions now this you have already learned in your previous standards that how to observe the calendar and answer the questions let us see the first question how many days does august have so the answer is yes 31 days on which day is the independence day so the independence day is on 15th of august and the day which it is is a friday let us see the next question how many Mondays does this month have? So we have to count the number of Mondays which are there. So it is, yes, four. Now we are going to learn how to measure a period of time. For example, Surekha went to her uncle's village in May. She went swimming every day from the 9th to the 25th of May. How many days did Sureka go swimming? To find it out, let us count the days from the two dates. That is from 9th May to 25th May. Now we will take the help of a calendar and we will start counting the number of days on it by marking from 9th till 25th of May. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So, from 9th May to 25th May, it was 17 days. So our final answer is Sureka went swimming for 17 days. Now we shall learn about the leap year. Leap year occurs once every 4 years. A leap year is a year with 366 days. So normally in a year there are 365 days but when it is a leap year we have one day extra so it is 366 days the february month has 29 days in a leap year some rules you have to follow when it is a leap year how do we come to know that it is a leap year when the last two digits of the given year is divisible by four it's a leap year a century year however is a leap year only when the number represented by the first two digits of the year is divisible by four now let us understand this to find whether the given year is a leap year or not we'll see a few examples suppose the year 1804 is given to us so we have to take the last two digits that is 04 so 04 divided by 4 is equal to 01 so 04 is divisible by 4 thus the year 1804 was a leap year 
let us see one more example year 1987 now we have to divide 87 by 4 we get 21.7 so 87 is not divisible by 4 thus year 1987 was not a leap year now let us see one more example the year 2200 which is not yet come which will be coming later on so let us see now here it is a century year okay so the last two digits are zero so we won't take that when it is a century year we have to take the first two digits so we'll take 22 and we'll divide it by 4 so we get 5.5 .5. So, 22 is not divisible by 4. Thus, the year 2200 will not be a leap year. I hope so you have understood this lesson and enjoyed watching the video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe my channel and stay tuned for the next video. Bye-bye.